What is up guys? Welcome to another OBS tutorial. Today we are going to go over live streaming. So there are going to be timestamps below um, and it's going to jump to different parts. So if you are fairly familiar with OBS and how live streaming works, then go ahead. And the second half of this video we'll go over some tips and tricks of, you know, live streaming with DxTory, recording and live streaming, having a chat overlay, music, uh, all that kind of stuff. So. Anyways, um, what we're going to do is, if you've seen my other videos, you know how to probably add a uh, scene here. I'm just going to call this live stream, and then I'm going to add some sources, one being game capture. Uh, I'm just going to leave it called game capture. I'm not going to select anything yet because I don't have a game running. And remember, DX, or, uh, excuse me, OBS needs something to lock onto, uh, and if there's not a game running, it will just lock onto nothing pretty much. So. Uh, another thing we're going to use is a video capture device, so we're just going to use a webcam. I would say most people should use a webcam. I mean, it really depends on uh, how, you're sh how you run your stream. That's completely up to you, obviously, but a lot of people prefer webcams. I know a lot of viewers prefer to have webcams on, so I'll teach you how to do that as well. Um, so that's really simple. Two things that we just set up took us two seconds. So we're going to go into settings. This is where things get a little more tricky and where you're going to have to probably do a little research on your own part. So uh, in the encoding bit, we're going to use a quality balance of seven. So uh, basically, uh, people over at Twitch have said uh, quality balance of seven to ten doesn't really make a difference in live streaming. It just sucks up processing power. So no reason to use anything higher than that. So we're going to use CBR and CBR padding enabled. And uh, we're not going to use a custom buffer size for this tutorial. It's easier just to leave this uh, j just set to whatever your max bitrate is. So it basically it will buffer the amount that you're about to send out uh, in, in the most basic of terms. Uh, and what we're gonna need to do to find out our max bitrate is Google and do a speed test. I'm sure plenty of you probably already know what your connection is. So make sure to go ahead and just double check your speed test. Maybe do it a couple times to make sure you're not having dropouts or anything like that. And live streaming is very dependent on upload speed. You can see I have a pretty decent download speed of 50, but my upload speed, since I have cable internet, is really crappy. It's only about 3. So what this number translates into here, this like 3.0, actually that would be like 3000 basically. So think of it megabytes or megabits to kilobits basically. So uh, how we're going to look at this is we want to use about 80% ish somewhere in there. Uh, to figure out what works for you because uh, um, if you're live streaming multiplayer games you can get a lot of lag and have really high ping especially if you're playing like first person shooters and trying to live stream them if you don't have a whole lot of upload speed it's probably not even worth it so I would say at a minimum to play something like Battlefield and live stream it you need to have about a 3 upload uh, just because if you have a really low bit rate and you're trying to use it kind of split your connection in the middle. You're gonna have a really pixelated stream, and uh, to be honest, it's not gonna be that great of a viewing experience. And I'm not sure if it's even worth it. Not to discourage any of you from live streaming, I think it's really cool, but uh, just keep that in mind. Uh, you might have a really pixelated stream if you're trying to do 720p with like a 1500 bit rate or something like that. So uh, maybe some games like DayZ where there's not a ton of action the whole time, you could probably get away with it. Uh, just Keep in mind that's where you're gonna have to sacrifice some of your connection there. So, what Twitch recommends is no less than an 1800 bit rate for a 720p 30 FPS. I would say if maybe if you're playing something like Hearthstone that's uh, not very action packed, you could get away with like a 1200 to 1500 max bit rate. But uh, for this demonstration, I'll actually use 2000. So that'll be our max bit rate. That's two thirds of my connection. That's still giving me enough headroom that if I wanted to play a multiplayer game, I would be okay. This is something, like I said, you're just going to have to do a couple test streams, see how it uh, turns out. I'll show you how to record stuff on Twitch as well so you can know how it works exactly. So, uh, one thing I did forget in the audio settings, we're going to turn this down to 128. So, AAC 441 128. And that's just going to not hog up so much bandwidth because to me personally, uh, audio is important, but I think your stream looking nice is a little bit more important. So what we're going to do here is uh, go to live stream only. You're going to select uh, probably Twitch. I mean, you can uh, go to YouTube and live stream there. Um, uh, YouTube has its problems, and I honestly prefer Twitch. Uh, your stream key. Now what you're going to have to do is go to Twitch 
and make sure you have an account, I already have an account and all that, so uh, it's pretty simple. Um, I will leave a link, this is Better Twitch, it's uh, Better TTV is what it's called, it's a Chrome extension. Uh, hopefully I don't get a copyright thing for <laughs> recording some guy's stream for two seconds. Anyway, basically you're going to make an account, uh, I bet most of you already have this, go to your dashboard here, and then we're going to go to stream key. Obviously I'm not going to show my stream key because I don't want you guys to have it, but it's going to come down with a long series of letters and numbers and you're going to post that in this little thing right here. That's pretty self-explanatory, I don't touch anything else. You can set up hotkeys, but it's not a huge deal, so uh, let's keep moving on. In the video tab, this is where you're going to scale your stream. I would say um, if you don't have at least like a, a 2,000, 2,500 bitrate, uh, I wouldn't bother with 1080p and it's going to take a toll on your computer. Remember, uh, live streaming is CPU intensive, so if you don't have at least probably a quad core, an AMD 6 core, I mean you can do it with stuff like an i3 that has hyper threading. Uh, hyper threading certainly helps in um, live streaming, but uh, play around with it. If your game is really suffering in frame rates, then maybe live stream isn't for your uh, computer. But, you know, like I said, test it. Uh, look around and see if other people have used your hardware to live stream. And, again, it depends on the game. So, even my computer struggles to live stream something like Battlefield 4. It's just pretty demanding. Uh, luckily, I have the i7 now, so it does a lot better. But with my 3570K, it would chug. So anyway, uh, I'm going to go ahead and downscale mine to 720p right here at 30 FPS. Uh, again, I'll leave links down below where you can look and see what bit rates you need to do like 1080p, 60 FPS, and stuff like that. Uh, I think the standard for 1080p uh, is around a 3000 bit rate. So uh, we'll move on to the audio. This is pretty easy as well. I use just the default audio device um, just because my, my audio is set up a little bit wonky and then my microphone is this uh, Line 1-2 uh, Digidesign Inbox 2 and basically my microphone only comes on comes in on the left side so I have to force it to mono uh, but most of you probably shouldn't have to do that. Uh, and then the the uh, desktop boost in the mic auxiliary boost. Again, you're gonna have to test your stream a couple times to figure out, or maybe if you can get a friend to come watch a test stream and kind of tell you, okay, your mic's a little low, or you know, this is loud. You can, if you, um, these sliders over here are going to adjust your microphone and your game volume. But if you can't turn up your microphone anymore, uh, you can go ahead into the audio setting and boost it up a little bit. I was just messing around with this and actually needs to be something more along those lines for me. Alrighty guys, now onto the advanced tab. Basically we're just gonna, uh, if you're at the defaults, all we're gonna change is change this X264 encoding profile to main and I'm gonna change the keyframe interval to two uh, seconds. So I'm just gonna hit apply and that is it. Alrighty guys, let's actually get up and live streaming. So basically what we're gonna do is go back to our Twitch dashboard um, and we're gonna go to the live tab and that'll bring us to this little screen uh, And I'm just gonna title this a test stream and I think I'm gonna play like Team Fortress 2 uh, th This game does play nice with live streaming uh, just keep in mind some games Don't really like to be live streamed or just captured in general So uh, Google is your friend in that case and I bet somebody out there has figured out how to make it work so uh, basically I'm just gonna fire up Team Fortress real quick and uh, I do have it running in a window right now, so um, if you'll excuse me just a second, I can get this uh, out of the way for <laughs> the time being. So we're gonna go back to our uh, game capture over here, right click it, hit properties, hit refresh, and Team Fortress 2 will now be popped up, so I'll hit okay. And then I can hit preview stream. So as you can see, we have our game being captured. I'm down here in this little corner here, and I can just hit edit scene. So edit scene will allow me to move my webcam around here and if I get centered and I can kind of crop it down. If you hold alt, this is new to OBS, you can actually crop the, the picture and that's super handy. So if your webcam can only be in one place, you can actually use this to move it around and you know just move it around to a spot that's not covering up like a mini map or anything or uh, a lot of people in DayZ put their webcam over the top of where it would say player's name so they don't get stream sniped. That's a whole other thing that you're probably not going to have to worry about when you're first starting out, but in the future, uh, just good to have and keep in mind. And uh, 
yeah, that's it. We're ready to go. So after I've got my preview stream ready to go, I'm going to go ahead and hit start streaming. So that's going to go over to my dashboard. It will take a second for it to get up and going. But uh, while that's starting, we're going to talk about these little numbers down here. So this is our bit rate. As you can see, it's going to go around 2000. So if it's if it needs a little more headroom, it's going to go ahead and pop up. And uh, let me mute the stream real quick so I don't get streamception here. Uh, and um, basically, it's going to show us our FPS. If we start dropping frames, it'll tell us that that's happening. And uh, uh, basically, what drop frames means is your connection's getting choked a little bit, and it's having to cut down frames to put the stream out. So keep an eye on that. And uh, if you do have two monitors, it makes live streaming a whole lot easier. Uh, but if you don't, uh, maybe grab your phone or grab a, a laptop if you can. Uh, maybe even grab the TV from downstairs for the afternoon and hook it up to your computer. I guarantee you it will save you a lot of trouble. So basically I have Team Fortress 2 running in my other monitor here. You can kind of, uh, I don't know if it's going to pick up on this recording, but uh, it's running over here. And um, as you can see, it's being captured. So I'm live streaming out to Twitch right now and we're up and going. This is all you need to know. This is all you need to do to uh, get going. Now, like I said, uh, you can record your uh, live stream here. So how would one go about doing that? So basically we're going to go over to our settings and you can actually record your streams straight from uh, basically your your live stream. So what you can do is go down here and click uh, archive my, my broadcast and uh, that will be it. And just make sure you save your settings and basically it will save your previous streams and you can go back and highlight things so uh, if I go back to my profile here you can see I've highlighted a couple th uh, things from streams I've done before and uh, it'll save your past broadcast basically you can do a test stream for a couple minutes then go back and uh, see how it worked and see what it looked like um, also you can google plenty of tutorials on how to set up a, a info and specs sheet below. Uh, I'm not an expert on this part at all, I just kind of googled how to do that. So that's all we're really going to go over on this end of things. I think uh, this will be where I cut it off and go into part two, so give me just a second to get reset up.